Sabine Wren's secret past has been revealed, but what will happen next? Hello Star Wars fans, my name is Joel Robinson and this is Theory Crafting. Today we're talking all about Star Wars Rebels Season 4 Episode 1 and 2, Heroes of Mandalore. Before we explore the theories of where Rebels is going, it is very important to understand the basic plot of these two episodes. And to do that, you must understand the history leading up to these episodes. So here is a brief rundown. The Darksaber is a MacGuffin from Star Wars The Clone Wars, a weapon whose owner is the leader of Mandalore because honor, I guess? I don't really know. It never was really explained. But hey, don't overthink it. Black lightsabers are cool. So in Rebels, Sabine has been given the small job of uniting all the fractured clans of Mandalore and uniting them as one army against the Empire. So she does what every teenager does when they are confronted with the need to do something important. She tries to give the responsibility to literally anyone else. First, when Sabine receives a Darksaber, she gives it to Kanan for safekeeping. Then, after being pressured by Kanan, Finn Rao, and Hera, she finally decides to learn to wield her lightsaber and lead her people. Until she finds her mother and decides to give her the Darksaber. I mean, Sabine really does not want that Darksaber. Then after a lightsaber duel with Governor Gar Saxon, Sabine once again ends up with a Darksaber. But don't worry, because in Rebel Season 4, Sabine finally finds someone else to try to give a lightsaber to. For those who don't know, Bo-Katan was a sister of Satine, and she served as a part of Death Watch. Anyway, her story was really, really awesome in the Clone Wars, but who cares about the past? Let's keep going. Katan tells Sabine that she really doesn't want the lightsaber because reasons. Once again, this doesn't make sense, but it really isn't a problem if you don't think about it. Because basically, Bo-Katan is going to undo everything she just said and take up the Darksaber because better reasons? So after once again not being able to give away the Darksaber, Sabine and the crew decide to rescue her father. Yep, the man who is just known as an artist. Because, in the words of Kanan, Sabine's father is important. Sabine's father is important. Why is he important? And why should you care? I don't know, just stop thinking about it. After that, there's this whole other thing where Sabine made this super weapon that shoots lightning and vaporizes anyone using Mandalorian armor. Why would she make such a weapon? I don't know. But the answer always is, don't think about it. Sabine later uses her hacking skills to press 13 buttons and magically make the machine a giant taser that only attacks stormtroopers. Let's pause here for just a second. Because Sabine is confronted with ethical implications by Bo-Katan of using such a weapon on the Empire, saying that it would make them just as bad as the Empire. First of all, this logic is insane. Why would it be evil to have a weapon that only targets soldiers? That is an amazing technology. That would have saved millions of rebel troops. Sure, it could have been reprogrammed, but still, it is so much safer to just have a giant taser as compared to the bombs, blasters, and even ion weapons the rebels use. Secondarily, if let's say that the idea was to save the Imperials that were aboard the Star Destroyer, then Sabine failed as well, because by cutting the weapon with the Darksaber, she makes it explode and therefore explode the entire Star Destroyer, killing everyone that didn't have a jetpack to fly away with. It's pure insanity! So the moral lesson is, don't be like the evil empire and use this weapon to kill everyone. Instead, destroy the weapon and kill everyone. I mean, I guess as long as you're not directly killing them, you're morally clear. Right? After all that, Sabine basically gives Bo-Katan the Darksaber because Bo-Katan realizes she is the hero Gotham, I mean Mandalore, deserves. So where is the story going and what can we gather from all this? Well, really nothing besides that side conversation between Hera and Kanan about how the Ghost crew is an important asset to the Rebellion. 
But that's not why you came here. You came here for answers. And by golly, I'm going to give you answers. What it sounds like from Hera's dialogue is that the rebels were counting on gaining some Mandalorians for some great big attack they've been planning. The two main ideas of what that could be are the attack on Scarif, as seen in Rogue One, or the Battle of Lothal, as seen in the Rebels season trailer. We know with 100% certainty that this season will end with our Rebels battling against Thrawn's forces. So most likely, Mon Mothma and the Rebel forces will get involved with some type of battle against Thrawn before the Battle of Scarif. As far as what that means for the future of Rebels, as to whether Lothal will be free, I don't know. But I can't wait to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel and comment down below and share what you think about where Rebels Season 4 is going. And as always, may the Force be with you.